dishes or cans. And this is not a spring chicken today. You're going to hear our review of a film screen. Actually, we saw this from the LA Times screening series. And it's a movie called Martha Marcy May Marlene. And it was part of the LA Times, um, what is it? Their Oscar screening Their series. Their envelope series. Yes. But it's something that's going to be released in the theaters. Yeah, actually. This, for a limited release. I think it starts tomorrow. tomorrow. It yeah. It starts a limited release. So, um, this is one of those movies you're going to be hearing about. There was a lot of buzz about it at the Sundance Film Festival. Yeah, and there was a, a lot of buzz at it after the screening because I know we had a, we had a reviewer that was setting, uh, a reviewer for a major chain was sitting there and she was greatly disturbed by what she saw on the street. Well, because in a sense, it's a, it's, it's like a redo of the Manson family because that's who they were doing, including a guy that looks like Manson himself. It was. And the people that are in the movie, the first one is Elizabeth Olsen. And she, yes, remember the Olsen twins? She actually is the younger sister of the Olsen twins. She's she, a little bit taller. Yeah, well, she's what an Olsen twin would look like if one of them actually had a hamburger. Mm -hmm. You know what I was amazed about? Yeah. Is I saw her in person and I saw her on the screen. She looked a lot bigger. Okay, you're gonna, you're gonna say, of course she looked a lot bigger on the screen because the no, screen. She looked a lot heavier on the screen. Yeah. Than, but she Even though we were really close but to the But here's the trick was she was two years younger. Ah, maybe it was, you know, she, she, she had baby fat all over yeah. the place. But there, besides the fact that the, the reviewer was somewhat, she thought it a disturbing picture. I also heard other, I saw other reviews and it said, you know, what the hell happened? All the nudity was in that thing we saw at Sundance. <laughs> yeah. and I think part of it had to do with one was at Sundance, which is a little bit more. The other cool. was for the Oscar, Oscar screening, screening event. Yeah. In a more conservative area. With a lot of old people. That would what be voting talking? for the. It was in Sherman Oaks. Sherman Oaks is the home of a lot of older Academy voters. Yeah. Not younger. I mean, look, okay, we put it this way. I could go into a place and actually be young, you know? <laughs> and she looked like three with great grandkids. Well, actually, it'll be interesting to see what actually comes out of the theaters because. Why well, not? I, I think we may. See it a, may be somewhere in between. I think. Well, I mean, or the more conservative version. You know, they'll probably leave the Sundance version for DVD. Yeah, that would be the director's cut. Okay, what happens is, yeah. well, actually, if the director actually made a cut, which I don't think he did. He did win the director's award at Sundance, and he was on, I think he was, at, they were at the Cannes Film Festival and were very hot there. But, I mean, I'll, I'll give you my opinion, because I started, I mean, I've been in the film business for a god awful long time, but when I was in college, oh god, when I was in college like oh, well over 50 years ago, when we didn't have a script, we'd tell the people, okay, this is the I, this is the premise. I want you people to get together in a room and decide how you're going to do it. And what did, what were we told by, um, by, what's her, by Sarah Paulson and uh, Elizabeth, Olsen. Elizabeth Olsen that they did before, the day before they started shooting? Mm -hmm. They got together and worked out the history of what they were doing and why they were well, doing Well, actually, it. that kind of surprised me because it usually is in the script. Uh, but no. I, or it's the backstory behind the script. What it did, it looked to me like a 1959-1960 college production where the kids all got together and, uh, um, you know, actually, I was in those things a long That's time ago. That's what he's saying. <laughs> yeah, I was actually in those things. I, you know, hey, I got a camera. I have a barn. My dad's got some sound equipment. Let's make a movie. Oh, wait, now why would you say that? Because it looked like it was a cheap ass, really badly shot production. What is an independent movie? Which no. does not have the large budgets of okay. a studio production. Any production that doesn't have a distributor is called an independent movie. <laughs> That's the distributor before you actually start shooting. Um, it, you know, basically it did have, I mean, Sarah Paulson. Uh, Sarah Paulson uh, and Hugh Dancy. Hugh Dancy and uh, basically John Hawks. John Hawks, you've seen, uh, you know, and well, we talked about Sarah Paulson, but John Hawks has been seen in a lot of television shows. He generally plays the, uh, you know, sort of the bad guy. Actually, the kind of funny thing is, the day before we went to the um, to see the screening. He was sitting with the person across you know, over the table across from us going over a screenplay that he was working on, eating lunch at a McDonald's. Yeah, some of the things he's been more 
popularly known for is American Gangster and Me and You and Everyone We And know. A Perfect Storm. Yeah. And uh, The Surrogate. Oh, he's in Lincoln filming. Actually, I bet he's, he might be Lincoln. Yeah, I would guess he's got so. The, he's got the look. I would if, if you look, that's why it's like, when yeah, we saw yeah, him on the screen. It's by Steven Spielberg. Uh, oh, he could play, uh, where is, where's Hawks? He's playing. Uh, oh, he's not playing Lincoln. Daniel uh, Day-Lewis is playing Abraham I Lincoln. can make a real good guess. If you go down the screen, and we'll see if uh, we have John Wilkes Booth. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, I don't see John Wilkes Booth anymore. Uh-huh, guess. I bet he's going to be John Wilkes Booth. He's playing John Wilkes Booth because he is a very... You know, he's he is really he sounds like a classically trained performer with a and he plays a well, really good guitar. Mm -hmm. So, which you get to hear him playing guitar music, which I think I think all the guitar music was something that they dreamed up at the same time too. Because um, you know what happened was I looked at it as just a person at a movie in which the director who let the actors okay, a director is just a simple way of saying dictator. <laughs> And Sarah Paulson was in What Women Want, the one with Mel Gibson, yeah. Down With Love, Serenity, um, part of, it's, yeah. it's like Cupid, you know, it's, it's one of those things is you see her on the screen, okay, and you she, recognize her, but you don't know who she is. Okay, and uh, being What's that? Studio 60, uh, Deadwood, she was in... You know, uh, basically Jack and Jill. She's got a really long history, but she basically it was like a kid actor still. Mm -hmm. She goes back. I mean, she's not that old. Well, yeah, you know, <laughs> you go back 20 years, and she's only 30 some years old. She was a teenager when she started out. Yeah. But she's uh, she you know her character, which I thought was a lot different than what they were trying to make her out was, was somebody that was concerned about her sister. And, and basically blamed herself for everything that was wrong with her sister, and then is made to look like the really bad person. And if you're curious, because you're hearing about the people that are playing it, is what happens in the movie is this young girl, um, played by Elizabeth Olsen, yeah. otherwise known as Martha Marcy May Marlene. Yeah, it basically goes to a commune, which I've not seen a lot of on that part of the country, so. Yeah, in the Catskills. Mm. So anyway, she escaped a cult, yeah. led by John Hawks, who, who is a Manson. He basically, I mean, the guy is just, he's, he's, he's Manson, no matter how they want to describe it. He dresses like Manson, he talks like Manson, he looks like Manson. And so basically, she escapes, she's with her sister, and it's like post, post-cult, which she's kind of going through, and then she has flashbacks of how she was brought into the cult, and yeah, all, all that all stuff, and, but, um, okay. But, but, I mean, I, this is my take, which I told the reviewer, was simply, she's, they, all, they set the fact that she's got mental problems. That's been set from, you know, all the way through the movie, she had mental problems. So, therefore, did the cult thing ever even actually happen? Well, because she did ask her sister at one time, when they were just sitting and hanging out, she yeah. says, how do you know if something's real? Yeah. Or was it... It's, if it's reality or a dream or something, That's something right. like that. That's right. And um, the whole process is, was everything that you saw in the movie after her being taken to the home simply a fabrication in her mind and you were seeing the fabrication on the screen? Because you also have to listen to what they said when the two, when they were talking with the two ladies were talking together about, we, this, you know, we got together and decided how all the family and all this should be. But uh, it's got to be up to the people on the screen to decide how things yeah, actually work. Because you basically, this is this is your movie. This is your movie. Mm -hmm. It's up to you. To I remember decide. Elizabeth saying, she says, "Yeah, now it's your it's your movie. The audience's movie." Yeah, which means they're basically telling it. It's up to you to decide was actually what you saw on the screen happening, or was it the the work of a delusional mind? See, I mean, if you look carefully, listen. Okay, I looked at things which seemed to be totally out of place. And why would they be totally out of place? Because the, you would, they, there were things thrown in that were not, that should not have been in the picture. Because they actually had to go get the things that throw them into the picture. Mm. But if you're having a delusion, you're adding the things. things would be added. Yeah. But here's one of the things is, see for you, you're thinking of it, it was her paranoia. For me, as well as a lot of the women, we got, were really disturbed by it. It was really kind of eerie because 
it showed how they these young women were brought into a cult. Yeah, they go out and, and pitch the somebody, entire yeah. processes, and they create a family around them. And yeah. how the leader is just he's really calm and welcoming, and we all share. And, you know, even even things like remember when they first came in. This is all the clothes are here. Um, if something fits, you're welcome to wear it. Yeah, yeah. Right. And then they rename them. Yeah. You know, oh well, you look like a yeah, a Martha. Yeah. But it, you also have to look that nothing in the movie jives with reality. Uh, where they uh, they made a living by by doing. Um, they, 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 they were talking about knitting and, um, and, blankets. And, and there were no blankets ever made. Mm -hmm. They're also driving in, in Escalades, folks. Mm -hmm. You know, great big Catholic Escalades. You know, and um, they got all. They're just constantly. Money, they got money everywhere. And uh, so, where do they come up with the money? And they also have no compulsion about killing. Actually, that part was really disturbing too. And it showed how he trained them to kill. To kill people. To kill people, to kill animals. And that, that was kind of weird when they broke into the guy's house and they were just there. Oh, well, we were just looking. Yeah, and, and they killed a person. Mm -hmm. and she supposedly was witness to killing, which is what set her off to get out of there. Mm -hmm. You know, to get away because she witnessed a killing. But I didn't see any reports of a killing done. So that's why everything, everything is totally out of whack. Because they, well, when they're stealing, they're not stealing anything of commercial value. It's just like Tinker Toys in a house. Yeah, they're like, oh, you know, that's nice. Let's just grab that. You know, it's something like that. they want to play with, not mm -hmm. to make money off of. You're gonna, you're gonna rob somebody. You rob them for a reason. You know. Then they kill a person for no reason either. Mm -hmm. it, but what was Manson like? Uh, Manson was a uh, Manson was a very. Uh, <laughs>